are the innate gender differences which continue to determine our sex drives, or is sex drive a social construct that can be changed as societies, cultures and technologies change? As with all the nature-nurture debates, the answer is yes. As in both. Duh. But there is some interesting science involved that you should hear about. I'm Dr. Simon Falkt, philosopher and explorer of modern masculinity. Let me start with some background. The two sources of gender differences are studied by evolutionary psychologists and social constructionists. On the constructionist side, researchers like to show how gender roles have changed historically, often under the influence of new technologies. For example, the invention of the plow allowed for a greater food surplus which enabled people to have more children. Women who would previously only have a couple of kids now spend most of their adult lives pregnant or nursing, and thus were effectively too busy to be involved in public life. Women became caretakers and homemakers largely because of the invention of agriculture. Another technological invention has reversed this trend, the contraceptive pill. Since the 60s, women can decide to not be pregnant and thus to have more time to be active in politics and business. This fueled second-wave feminism and the drive to revise women's homebound role in society. Though to be fair, the feminist reception of the pill was a bit mixed. Meanwhile, evolutionary psychologists argue that at least some gender differences, especially those related to mate-seeking and selection, follow from the different adaptive challenges prehistoric men and women faced. For example, as men have a higher reproductive rate, we evolved to compete for acquiring mates, which likely contributed to our larger propensity for aggression and risk-taking and gave us bigger muscles. That is why we love our kids, too. As women are more vulnerable, especially during and after pregnancy, they tend to select for more protective and high-investment males. And that is true even in pre-agricultural societies, where women generally do as much providing as men. A lot of this research has been picked up in the popular discourse. What is rarely picked up, though, is nuance. If you only know about them secondhand, you would be excused to think that the evolutionary and social constructionist accounts are mutually exclusive and the people who propose them regularly jump at each other's throats. But nothing could be further from the truth. Few modern evolutionary psychologists deny that the social changes impact our expression of gender, nor do constructionists deny the role of our genes. For the most part, they just focus on their own bit, acknowledging that it's not the whole story. As with all nature-nurture debates, the answer is everything matters. Duh. But let's get to the part that everyone wants to know about. Who wants more sex and why is it men? In 2001, a large meta-analysis of 150 studies has found that men have a higher sex drive on every possible measure, confirmed in 2022 by an updated meta-analysis of 211 studies. Trigger warning, guys, the following will sound like a litany of despair. Men think about sex more often, report more frequent arousal, and have more frequent and variable fantasies. Men want sex more often than women. This appears to be true in both homosexual and heterosexual relationships, and at all ages and relationship stages. Men do appear much more motivated to have a high number of sex partners than women. Men masturbate more frequently than women. Women, on the other hand, find it easier than men to live without sexual gratification. Sexual interest appears very soon after puberty for males, where sexual interest is relatively slow to awaken in females. Women initiate sex less often than men. Fewer sexual practices appeal to women than men. Men spend a great deal more money on sexual products and services than women, even in societies where there have certainly been enough rich women to be able to pay for sex. Women are more critical of promiscuity, premarital sex, extramarital sex, and various other sexual activities. Women are more likely than men to report a serious or pathological lack of sexual desire, and couples have more conflicts and problems because of a female than male lack of sexual desire. And men report higher levels of sexual interest than women, regardless of age. Naturally, all of this is statistics expressing general trends, or as the scientists put it, most researchers would label the sex drive difference as moderate to large. About three quarters of men have a somewhat stronger sex drive than an average sex drive among women. But although a gender difference is clearly observable, there is still much variation between men and women. Still, if you're like me, you probably started crying halfway through this list. Why? Why is it like this? By the way, you'll probably chime with more stuff on my channel, so, you know, like and subscribe. But why is it like this? Sure, there are many evolutionary explanations. Men can have more offspring more easily, so wanting more short-term flings is adaptive. The cost of pregnancy is non-existent for us, so we don't need to be picky about our partners, and so on. 
you know all that. But there's good evidence that prehistoric women did actually want sex as much or more than men. For one, the female orgasm isn't followed by a refractory period. Women have literally evolved to be able to have way more sex than men. Moreover, women are much more likely than men to engage in sexual vocalization. Scientists are way too prudish to just say moaning and screaming. Why? Well, naturally to signal what's going on to everyone around. And why are men aroused by that? So they can quickly get ready and find a woman to offer her more sex, of course. Many non-human primates still do that, by the way. If you need more, just go research why human penises are mushroom-shaped. Or better, go read Sex at Dawn by Christopher Ryan and Cassiel Dayefa, but be prepared to be very surprised by a great deal of evidence to support the claim that before the invention of agriculture, gender differences in sex drive were pretty much non-existent. So what has changed? Did evolution take a turn, or are social cultural factors responsible? Again, yes. As in, both. There are two scientific findings I want to share with you, and I warn you, both will make you go, oh shit. But first, let's get one thing straight. I don't care what you think about gender equality in the modern day. You might think that we are far from achieving it and men continue to have a great deal of unearned privilege. You might think that equality has been achieved long ago and modern feminism is about establishing female supremacy. Or you can be anywhere in between. But whatever you think about what is going on now, you'll probably won't deny that for centuries and millennia past, men have been the dominant force in the world. Past men had the power to determine what the political, economic and social life would look like. They wrote texts which defined what is right and wrong. They led religions which dictated people's role in society at all levels. They were in charge of their families. And if women had any problem with any of that, men could simply and legally make them comply through law, social pressure or brute force. None of us today is personally responsible for any of that, of course, but it's just a fact. That is what it has been like pretty much since the invention of agriculture until quite recently. Okay, with this out of the way, let's get to the two scientific findings. The first is called sexual fluidity. Women's sexual preferences have been shown to be significantly more malleable than men's. This goes as deep as sexual orientation. While guys generally know if they're gay, straight or somewhere in between, women are much more likely to fluctuate. Similarly, women are more likely to have their sex drives impacted by social expectations and flexibly adjust them to the environments they're in. What does this mean? Well, let's say you take a group of men and a group of women and place them in an environment in which sex is viewed as something dirty, to be ashamed of, and tied with a social expectation to abstain. Say, in most of Western Christian history. Such an environment will impact women's natural sex drive to a greater extent than men's. Guys will hear all the moralizing, but at the end of the day, the body wants what it wants. Women, however, will be statistically more likely to internalize and adopt it. Now, top this up by introducing power imbalances such that for men, sex is culturally associated with winning something, conquest, power, taking what we want, while for women it is associated with losing something, being conquered, overpowered, and very often forced to do it against her will, often in a way that is painful. Add the fact that men are praised for their sexual conquests, but women are slut shit for this. And don't forget porn, most people's main sexual education. It represents men as getting what they want from the most beautiful women, but women are submissive to and degraded by rather basic looking men. Sounds like a recipe for a cultural setting that is bound to destroy the sex drive in women? Frankly, it's a miracle that they have any left. How strong it must have been to survive all of that. But I warn you, it gets worse. That was part of the nurture side, if you wish. Now let's turn to nature. Let's talk about hereditary sexuality. Did you know that interest in casual sex, or social sexuality as the scientists call it, is more hereditable among females than among males at 0.43 to 0.26? In other words, the likelihood of wanting to sleep around is more influenced by genetic factors in women. Now, think about all those centuries of putting female chastity, virginity and purity on the pedestal. Of preferentially marrying chaste and demure virgins who wouldn't have too much of this hysterical need for their own sexual satisfaction and certainly wouldn't even think about premarital sex or cuckolding their husbands. Of those women's children having preferential treatment. Of unchaste women being sent to convents or left without life opportunities. Or even burned at a stake at witches. Yes, we used to literally burn women alive for liking sex too much. Meanwhile, the children of those women awaited a life uphill, if they didn't die in infancy. According to the quoted research, the sons of the select chaste women won't be that likely to inherit their low interest in sex. But the daughters will, generation after generation. Let that sink in for a moment. We have literally spent centuries breeding sex drive out of women. Thankfully we didn't succeed, but we damn well tried. 
Who is we? Well, here is the hard truth, guys. All the sacred texts which founded the ethics of chastity were written by men. All the legal codes which determined women's place in family and society, as well as that women should be punished for cheating but not men, were also written by men. Until this day, most porn is made by men for men, and it is overwhelmingly men who slut shame and not the other way around. And what do we call a system of power in which it is men who call the shots? Exactly. If you ever needed proof that the patriarchy screws men over too, look no further. Okay, so how do we move forward? I have presented all of this from a very male perspective, but naturally this isn't primarily about men. Women want to enjoy sex for their own sake, and they certainly don't want to have their lives and sexualities curtailed by what some old farts determined as proper. On this one, our interests are really pretty well aligned. The first thing men can do to reduce the sex drive difference and help women reconnect with their sexualities is to just let them. Sex is fun, they already want it, just don't make it harder. It's really easy because all you need to do is nothing. Don't slut shame, don't cut color, do other things that make sexuality feel oppressive and sleazy. Don't abuse, manipulate or otherwise make sex feel dangerous. But then there's so much more we can do. Instead of making sex feel shameful, oppressive and dangerous, we can make it feel safe, empowering and joyful. That takes some work though. Start by upholding a culture of acceptance for people's sexualities, whatever they are. Applaud your friends for their sexual adventures. Defend them from abuse and harassment. Educate yourself about consent and genuinely respect women to make them feel safe. Ask your lovers what they like and do it as well as you can. Invite them to state their boundaries so that they might know that you will be mindful of them. And be patient if things don't quite go as you want them to. Most guys won't do any of this. Most guys don't see the big picture. Most guys just do what they want at the moment without thinking that they are actually shooting themselves and everyone else in the foot. Most guys just perpetuate the system and are part of the problem. Don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. I hope that this video made you see the gender sex drive gap in a new light. Share your thoughts in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe to find out more about how to be a man in the changing world. I'm Dr. Simon Fogt, philosopher and explorer of modern masculinity, handing you the man's compass.